pretty nice to be turned on. All right. Jennifer Skye is a writer of fiction and nonfiction, a student, an actress, a former model, and believer in magical things. Her work has appeared online at Tin House, The Rumpus, Interview Magazine, Electric Literature, AOL, 12th Street, and in a short story anthology, Love Magic. She modeled for such top magazines as Seventeen, YM, Allure, Elle, Vogue, and Maxim, and appeared in recurring roles on CSI Miami, Xena, Warrior Princess, and Fastlane, as well as playing the title character on the cult sci-fi series Cleopatra 2525. She lives in Brooklyn. Let's welcome Jennifer Skye. makeup also, but that's because it's being filmed. <laughs> I'm a good little actress. Um, <laughs> I was trained well. Um, thank you everyone for coming. I am actually a writer of nonfiction mostly, um, but I am going to grad school next year for fiction, which is exciting. I'm going to be going to Brooklyn College, which Woo! is also exciting. Yeah. Like a city school. I'm at the new school right now for undergrad. Um, and this is actually this uh, story that I'm going to read is the only uh, erotic story I've ever written. It's um, from the anthology called Love Magic, which was um, put together by here's a little here's a little. Uh, um, cover art from uh, put together by the YA writer and um, she does adult work and she also does erotic pieces um, Francesca Leo Block she's actually spectacular and this is um, available by on a bunch of different formats nowadays uh, Google has it lots of different places has it um, but so <clears throat> I've never written an erotic story before. This is my erotic story. I'm, it's actually something I had to overcome reading this. I read it one other time, and when Mike invited me to do this, I was a little hesitant because I, it was really a fear I had to, I had to overcome again. So I was happy to uh, face my demons and uh, present this. So thank you very much for allowing me to face my demons in front of all of you. And it just happens to be a little bit of a <clears throat> prophetic moment because this um, is about a girl named Spring and today is the first day of Spring. Woo! Yeah. Um, this is called Between the Folds of Clover, an erotic daydream. She lay waiting for him, spread out like the carpet of clover under her thighs, facing the sky. The day was soft and warm over her bare legs, as soon the soon falling light ran along the lime-colored grass. The white silk sheath dress she wore no longer covered all of her, curves high and center left exposed, and the pink silk lace fringe of a little girl like panties. She knew he was coming sometime. She needed him to fill the hollows left from her past, a love lost to the spells of nighttime visitations and snow. Evening began to fall. The sky softened, dripping like a watercolor painting fresh on the paper, not yet dry, not yet set. Peeking from between the folds of clover sprung patches of white blooms, <coughs> leaves taking on a fancy air dressed up for the coming of spring. She sighed and rubbed the, oh, her smooth palms over the ground, grabbing the white spurts and ripping them out, rubbing the clumps, the clumps of dusty white along the sides of her face. She could feel the whispers of dew leaving tiny trains of moisture on her pink, perfect skin. She rubbed and waited. Shadows rippled and morphed along the ground, changing like creatures in her childhood dreams. In the distance, 
on the other side of the hill of green. A group of dog beasts leaped at one another, mounting each other's backs in fun and folly. Closely watched by their human superiors, a group of couples and friends, people out for the end of the day before they returned home, to dinner, to bed, to feel each other in the dark, and suck and lick the night away. She wanted to be a couple again, to bathe with a man again, the warm liquid calling them lower to lower deep inside. His hardness would peek out of the water like a snail or a shark. She would lower her face and slowly run her tongue along the tip while cupping his rest below the surface. He would become aroused, needing more, and gently thrust deeper into her mouth, hitting the back of her throat. She would hold him, the whole of his oversized self in her mouth, while running her tongue back and forth. He would love this. It was his favorite. Excited, perhaps alone, he would begin to thrust, sometimes going so deep that she would gag but continue on, breathing, sucking desperately. She liked the pleasure and the pain. Under the water, his hand would reach for her soft skin, following the narrow bit of cur curls between down her middle, her wet middle, finding her soft knot. Upon feeling him exploring, she would press hard into his hand while sucking down and up. Faster and faster, they would go in unison. Soon, she would need more. Releasing him from her mouth, she would press up, rising above the water with her hand. She would lower his head, guiding her, his lips to and where she needed them, needed them most. They would meet her lips and his once, twice, three times before the pink bit of his tongue began, his hands pulling apart the protecting layers searching for the center, the tiny bit peeking out from its shell. This he would slowly suck at gently, lapping, teasing it while her euphoria arose. It was the best of all drugs. A happy wave coming closer with each movement of his soft mouth. Finally crying out, she would feel a form of nature's purest light penetrate her body. And just as she did, he would expertly place a finger inside her, finding a spot and wiggling. Her climax would be so great, and sometimes this did happen, that she would spritz a clear, sweet spray. Together they would giggle into the steam air, and bliss descended. Spring wanted that decadence again, and so she waited for him, fall. She waited and hoped blindly as love is for the boy with the soft curls colored like leaves of a turning maple to come, to lie down beside her among the pollen and the weeds, to lean in towards her, to collect her lips one at a time into his mouth, first the top, then the bottom, breathing her breath, sucking her in, and telling her, you, spring, are beautiful. For fall in all his art of color and harvest dances and fire in the air was the true opposite of spring, a true love. And winter, oh winter, was just a readying, a sleep, a cold in the earth and in the heart. <laughs>